Let's determine if the relationship shown in these ordered pairs is one that is uh, inversely proportional, meaning do these three points belong to the same inverse variation? And for inverse variation, I have to remember that it's not the same as direct variation. It's, it's quite the opposite. And the constant is determined by x times y. So if x times y is constant, then I have an inversely proportional relationship. So what I do is I take the x value and I multiply it by the y value and see if I always get the same number. So 1 times 24 is 24. 2 times 12 is 24. And 3 times 8 is 24. So that means that, yes, this is an inversely proportional relationship. So yes, it's an inversely proportional relationship. And furthermore, I can write the equation because I know the equation is of the form y equals the constant divided by x. And so this process here told me the constant, which gives me the number I need in my equation. Let's determine if the data points in the table form an inversely proportional relationship or an inverse variation. And remember, for inverse variation, x times y must be constant. And so I'm going to test out by multiplying the x values times the y values. So 8 times 5 is 40. 5 times negative 8, or negative 5 times negative 8, sorry, is also 40. And then 10 times negative 4 is negative 40. And although they all have 40s, this is actually a negative 40 and messes the whole thing up. So therefore, this is not an inverse variation. I need to be able to determine if an equation represents an inversely proportional relationship or if it belongs to the family of inverse variation. And I want to be able to do this upon inspection, which means just by looking at the equation. And so that means I need to remember what's special about inversely proportional relationships. And what's special is that either x times y equals some constant, or if I write that in function form, it's y equals k over x. So what I'm looking for are equations in this form. And so if it is in one of these two forms, then it is indeed an inverse variation. So if I look at this very first example, xy equals 5, well, this is of the first form. So yes, this first one is an inversely proportional relationship. And the constant is 5. And this one, y equals 7 divided by x, is of this form. And so yes, this one's also an inversely proportional relationship or an inverse variation. And then I look at this one, y equals x over 2. And it looks like it might be because it's y equals some kind of fraction. But if I look closely, in the inversely proportional relationship, x is in the denominator. But here it's in the numerator. So actually, this is not an inverse variation. As a matter of fact, it's a direct variation because I can write this as y equals 1 half x. And it hits the format y equals some constant times x. Now, it looks like this one's not an inverse variation because it has that plus 8. And I don't see any of these things with the plus 8. But remember, if I can use a property of equality to transform it so it looks like one of these forms, just like I could for a direct variation, then I know it's indeed an inverse variation. So if I look at this and I think, well, I want to get the x. It looks like it might be this form here. So if I want to get the xy by itself, I can subtract off 8 from both sides using my subtraction property of equality. And I get xy equals negative 8. And then it is in this form. And since it's in this form, I know that this one is, yes, an inverse variation. And the constant here is negative 8. Now I have one more example. y equals 4 over x plus 5. OK, so it looks like this plus 5 might be messing it up. This 4 over x is promising because y equals some constant over x. y equals 4 over x. But what's up with this plus 5? Is there a way for me to get rid of it so I can get just this form. There's no addition or subtraction here at all. It's just y equals a constant over x. And that's not what I have here. This plus 5 actually makes it not an inverse variation. So just like the direct variations, if I see a constant um, that's just like added to the x or the y, 
then it's not going to be a, a, an inverse variation either. The only difference is examples like this, where I can use the subtraction or addition property of equality to get the xy by itself, and then it equals that constant. You haven't seen very many graphs like those of the inverse variations because they don't belong to a family of functions that we study uh, so far in Algebra 1. They are actually a subset of the rational functions, and rational functions are uh, Algebra 2 functions, really. They're kind of fancy schmancy. Their domains are not all real numbers. Their graphs don't always look the same. And so we don't really study them in Algebra 1. Um, the only ones we do look at are those of the inverse variation because those graphs always do look the same. Um, and they have certain features that we're going to talk about. Now the example we're going to look at first is the example y equals 3 divided by x, which I already have loaded into my calculator. So if I press zoom 6, it'll graph, it'll graph it for you. And it looks like this graph is in two pieces. And it is, as a matter of fact. And uh, it looks like it's two little exponential pieces. And the reason why it looks like that is because it shares a feature with the exponentials. And that feature is an asymptote. As a matter of fact, this graph has two asymptotes. One that's the x-axis, and one that's the y-axis. So the x-axis and the y-axis are its asymptotes. And remember, those are graphs, or lines, sorry, the graphs get really, really close to, but never, ever cross over. Um, this graph has a name. It's called a hyperbola. And so if you ever see a graph with these two kinds of asymptotes like this, that have this shape, they're called hyperbolas. Now, we're going to talk about why this graph appears in the first and third quadrant, and that goes back to this fundamental x times y is constant. Um, so my constant in this case is a positive 3, and the only way to get a positive 3 from a multiplication is if I have a positive x-coordinate and a positive y, or a negative x and a negative y. And so then if I think about what y equals negative 3 over x is going to look like, um, if I go to y equals and I choose the other graph, y equals negative 3x, I'm looking for a constant of variation that's negative, and so I need a positive x and a negative y, or vice versa, so the graph actually appears in the thir uh, second and fourth quadrant. So all inverse variations will either um, look like this, or they'll look like that. I want to be able to write equations for inversely proportional relationships or inverse variations given a variety of information. For example, a table, a graph, um, or just a set of data points. And in order to do that, I need to remember the fundamental relationship behind an inverse variation, and that is that x times y is constant, and that constant, that k, is the numerator in this equation, y equals k over x. So if I'm given a graph, let's say a graph containing the point 3, negative 40, I can write the equation for that graph if I know it's an inversely proportional relationship. If I don't know what kind of relationship it is, that's not going to help. But if I see the graph of an inverse variation and I know one point on it is 3, negative 40, it's really easy to write the equation if I remember that x times y is constant in an inverse proportion, uh, inversely proportional relationship. And so the constant x times, uh, is x times y, which in this case is 3 times negative 40, x times y, uh, and 3 times negative 40 is negative 120. Now this negative 120 is what goes in that position of the k, so my equation is y equals negative 120 over x. So if I'm given, given, I have to be given an inversely proportional relationship, then I can just multiply the x times the y to find the number I need for my equation. If I've been given uh, the information that I have an inversely proportional relationship or an inverse variation, I can find missing values. So I can give you a table and tell you it's an inverse variation and you can find some values that I don't put in there. And once again, it goes back to the fundamental relationship behind an inverse variation, which is this x times y is constant. So I know uh, that 9 times y and 2 times 27 are exactly the same thing. So this gives me a one-step equation to solve to find the value of y. I do x times y and x times y. It's constant, so I set them equal to each other. 9y equals 54 
divide both sides by 9, and I get y equals 6. So therefore, that missing value is 6. So just remember, x times y is constant in an inverse variation. And now to check to see if you understand the material presented in this lesson. So I want you to come to class next time with these questions answered. First, uh, determine if the given relation is inversely proportional. If so, find the constant and then write the equation. Your first relation is in a table where you have an x is 5, 1 20th, negative 25, and the corresponding y values are 1, 100, and negative 1 -fifth. The second relation is the set of ordered pairs 3, 7, 7, 1 -third, and 14, 1 21sts. Then, for question B, I want, uh, I'm telling you you're given the graph of an inverse variation, and a point on the graph is negative 8, 14, and I want you to write the equation. And finally, you are given that you have an inverse variation, and two points on it are x18 and negative 2090, and your job is to find the missing value.